Hi there, we're looking at more quadratic equations and these are described as disguised quadratic equations, a bit like this fella here who presumably is disguised in some way. But the, the disguised quadratic equations um, come about because there, there's a there's greater variety of equations which we can pretend are quadratics, even if, they're, they're, if you look at them on the first, you know, first glance, they're not. So not all equations, basically, um, can be uh, treated and some can be treated as disguised equations. So here's some examples. But here, this doesn't look like quadratic. It looks on the face of it to be x to the power of 4. And it is x to the 4. But what you'll notice is a bit like a quadratic equation usually has so many x squared plus so many x's plus a number at the end like 14 or something or 1 in this case. Now what you'll notice is this power is double this power. And this power here, the 4, is double this 2. And then there's no power at the end, and then there's no power at the end. So this, although it isn't a quadratic, can be we can pretend it's a quadratic. This is the same. Look, x to the two thirds, x to the one third. Can you see how oh, that is double that? So if we double this, we get this. And then again, there's no number at the end, or no power at the end. So these are ones which look like they're not quadratics, but we pretend they are. This has got two x minus one squared. This has got two x minus 1 to the 1, and this has got no power at all, so it's a quadratic. Well, it's not really, but it looks like a quadratic. Well, that surely can't work. Well, if you think about powers, that's x to the 1. You may recall from your work on thirds that that can be written as x to the half. And notice how the power has doubled. And the last one, again, has got no power. So all of these are disguised quadratic equations. And as I've said here, the power of the first term is always double the power of the second term with the third term always just a constant. And our method, I'm going to do it, it this explains what we're going to do. We're going to set up a new dummy variable. A dummy variable is just any old letter we want, and we are going to use it. We then find the solutions and then go back and find the original num uh, solutions for the original letters. Um, first of all, before I go any further now let's talk about this dummy variable so this first one i'm just going to write as well you'll notice what you need to do is you look at this term here because this one would normally in that example i gave before x squared plus you know 5x or whatever plus 7 equals 0 it's this term which is the x this is what we we have as our main letter and then we square it over here so effectively this is our important dummy variable so I'm going to write y equals 3x minus 2. And because it's this term has got a square, that's that. So when I write out my equation, I'm, well, notice it's always double it. So the power is double it. So I'm just going to write y squared minus 5y plus 4 equals 0. And hopefully this first one looks like y squared minus 5y plus 4 equals 0. So it does work this. Now this one, I'm, it's a lot simpler. It's just got an x squared here. I'm going to pretend y is x squared. Then. And my equation now becomes, it's got four lots of x to the 4. So I shall do 4y squared plus 3y. Notice this first one's always y squared. Just a number. And then minus 1 equals 0. Now notice I'm not attempting to solve these yet, I'm just attempting to rewrite them. This one again, this one looks horrific. So if I write y as x to the half, which is what this thing is, then really what I'm then doing, or root x, I could write it as root x if I prefer, my equation, this is the double the power job again. This is y squared minus 8y plus 13 equals 0. What's this one? Well, again, you look at this one. y equals x to the third. So what's it giving me? Look, they've got a 3 at the front, so it'd be 3y squared plus just a single y minus 2 equals 0. I've run out of room here, so I'd better write it here. And y equals, again, look at the middle term. y is x to the half. So I've got 2y squared for this first bit. So again, x to the half, this is really x to the 1, that's the trick every time. Minus 7y plus 3 equals 0. And hopefully my answers are the same as that. And I'm for these having slid down a bit, but you basically get that. Yes, they have worked. 
So here now we've got an equation. So let's do this properly. We'll do it right from the start. We're going to start off, we're going to say, hang on a bit, it looks like a disguised quadratic. Why does it look like? Because we've got a power 4, which is double the 2, and there's no power. So it does look like a disguised quadratic. I set y equal to my x squared term. So therefore I've got 9y squared plus 8y minus 1 equals 0. And if I've got that as my quadratic, well, disguised quadratic equation, but now as a normal quadratic equation, I solve. So I get my calculator. You can do this yourself if you want, but uh, I'm going to mode. I'm going into the equation, and I'm going to solve for quadratic. So get yourself into the right mode. Type in your A, your B, and your C. 9A to negative 1. And what's it say my solution is? It comes up here. Now notice my solution is for y. So y, even though my calculator says x1 equals, y is a ninth. Press the second one. And I've got y is minus 1. So you ignore what the calculator says. You just take the numbers. What was y? Now y was x squared. So I can now write x squared equals a ninth. Or x squared equals minus 1. And now I solve for the x. Um, if you look at squared, I always have to square root it. x is the square root of a ninth. And if you do that, you get a third, or you get x is minus a third. I wonder how many of you would have forgotten x is minus a third as well. Ah, this one's slightly different. x squared is minus 1. Now, we, we have to say um, x has... Um, I'm going to change it. I'm going to write no real solutions. Um, you don't get a solution. You can't square root minus 1. That's basically the point. Since x squared is greater than or equal to 0 for all values of x. And I think I, you would have seen this in class by now. All values of x. It's um, a posh way of saying you can't square root a negative number. But a couple of years ago when they introduced the new exam board, the, a new exam regime, they started insisting you write this kind of thing to explain why this has no solutions. So I think my answer is a plus a third and minus a third. And that's what it says. There we go. Next equation. Oh, this doesn't look quite so nice. I don't like the, the fractions. So you might get into a habit of times and everything by the, um, the biggest power on the bottom. If you do that, it will just tidy up a bit. If I times everything by x to the 4, this becomes 3 minus this becomes 13. If I times that x to the 4 divided by x squared, it just becomes x squared on the top, minus 10x to the 4 equals 0. And just tidy it up, move everything onto the other side, you get 10x to the 4. Um, minus 13 will become plus 13x squared. That plus 3 becomes a minus 3. So it's really the same as last time. There's another way of doing it as well, by the way, but that's what I, I recommend you do, because then it's the same. Well, right, right, y equal to the middle thing, which will be um, x squared. And therefore, I've got 10y squared. Hopefully, you're getting the hang of this now. Plus 13y minus 3 is 0. Um, again, we chuck that into our calculator. Um, I'm going to type mine in. So 10x squared or y squared. 13 is my b. And then negative 3. And what's it say? It says x1 equals, but I know now it's y equals, and it's a fifth. So y is a fifth, and the other solution is minus 3 over 2. So I've got the same trick. I've got x squared there. x squared is a fifth. Really? Not really y at all. Or x squared is a negative number. Now we, we saw this just now. When you get negative numbers for these, this will be no real solutions as x squared is greater than or equal to zero for all values of x. So you get into a habit of just writing this whenever you get this same problem. But this one I can do. So x equals plus or minus the square root of a fifth. Um, and if you do that on your calculator, You'll get, it'll, it'll give you a slightly different version of that. So if I do 1 divided by 5, and I say square root it, please, I get plus or minus root 5 over 5. Now, actually, both are true. Most people prefer this 
because it hasn't got a square root on the bottom. Um, but that, there you go. So either of those will do. And we are going to have a look then at uh, exercise 3F in class. Um, we well, you know some money suggesting certain ones. So um, if you get chance, you might want to go back and look at those um, disguised quadratic equations that we saw right at the beginning. These are from proper exams. So you might want to have a look at these and see if you can find solutions for them. Um, and if you do that, these were my answers. So you've now got the opportunity to see if you get the same answers, just as an extension exercise for anyone who's super keen. So I hope that makes sense. And we'll do more of this next time.